John Markoff is my guest, really uh, the dean of tech reporters, a guy uh, you know I admire so much, been so inspired by over the years, and I'm thrilled to, to get you back on uh, on our microphones. We haven't had you here in so long. I'm glad to hear you're writing a book about the great Stuart Brand as well. Stuart, did, Stuart not only did the, the Whole Earth Catalog, and of course Steve Jobs famously quoted him in that commencement sure. address he gave in Stanford, Stay Hungry, Stay Foolish, right? That That's was, correct. And that was on the back, wasn't it, of the Whole Earth Catalog? That's right. That's I remember right. it on my, on my parents' coffee table. I'm a little younger than you, but I remember uh, the first one on the coffee table. I remember the last one. <laughs> On the coffee table, I remember flipping through it, and it was just a you know farm implement. It was just all sorts of stuff. Uh, it was kind of the web before the web. It was like the web in a book. Yeah, and I bought right. many of those things, uh, and still to this day, you know, I kind of cherish the memories of the whole Earth catalog. Where did Stuart come from? So Stuart grew up uh, in Illinois. He was sort of raised, his family was, the background was uh, a, a Michigan family, sort of a, a upper class in a way. I mean, he went, went to Exeter for a couple of years and then he went to Stanford oh. in the 50s. And then after Stanford, he went into the army and he was a paratrooper and ended up back in the Bay Area in 1961. Uh, but he, he obviously embraced the counterculture. Well, he created the counterculture. Yeah, okay. No, no, in a, in a, in a very specific way. Yeah. Um, you know, the counterculture in some ways grew out of these things called the acid tests. Uh, this is Ken Kesey, Ken Kesey and the Merry Pranksters yeah. and their house band, which was the Grateful Dead. Yeah. And Stuart organized, in, in many ways, what was the most um, visible and most uh, impactful of, uh, of the acid test. It was called the Trips Festival. And in a very specific way, it was the Trips Festival, which was held at the Longshoreman Hall in San Francisco yeah. in 1966. LSD was still legal at that point. Um, but it was that point that Bill Graham realized that there was a business in music and went on to create the Fillmore directly as a result of the Trips Festival. Wow. Wow. And of course, Steve Jobs uh, famously said uh, that acid was a, a key ingredient in his worldview and well, felt that was sorry for people who hadn't taken it. He said that to me, actually. Uh, that was one of, you know, there was a period when Steve had come back to Apple and uh, I, he was introducing products at a really rapid rate and I'd have regular interviews with him and we play this game with him trying to stay on message and me trying to get him off message. <laughs> what fun! <laughs> and that was one of the best gets. Um, yeah, he said that acid was one of the two or three most significant things right. in his life and because of that there were people uh, people like his wife and the corporate people that he dealt with who didn't understand uh, his world. Right. Completely. Right. And now Silicon Valley's microdosing again. Oh my, yeah, it's really quite remarkable. I, Ed Waldman has written this book on microdosing. And Jim Fadiman, who actually was the person who took Stuart Brand on his first LSD trip, again when it was legal in the early 1960s, um, is sort of responsible for this this re, the renewed interest in the impact uh, and the effect of, of psychedelics. What, what was Stuart's reaction when you said, I want to write a biography? <sighs> Well, Stuart, was, Stuart had spent a half a decade thinking about writing an autobiography, and he decided it was just too big of a project. He didn't want to take it on. And actually, it was Kevin Kelly who suggested the idea that I do it. It was Kevin's idea. And Stuart was quite happy to, to have me take up the project, and he's been, he's been great. We've been spending time together. His, his archives are at Stanford. There are journals. There's, there's lots of stuff that he's done. And, you know, this guy is a sort of a thoughtful intellectual who's been active over a half a century. There's a lot of material there. I can't wait to read it.